this book really showed me I need to repent of something. And I'll tell you what that is before the end of today's video. But before we get into the review, I want to thank those of you who have supported this channel in any way, first and foremost, but especially those of you who buy books based on the books that are in the wish list, because this was a book which was on the wish list. And if it wasn't for people who support and buy me books, which help me make more videos on this channel, etc., maybe this video wouldn't be a reality right now. I was very wary of reading a book like this. Now, I need to be educated on this particular topic. I'm not even going to lie, right? And this book here, The Whitewashing of Christianity, A Hidden Past, A Hurtful Present and A Hopeful Future, is a book which gets into the issues of racism and race in Christianity. Now, this is obviously a hot topic. And over the last year and a bit, I've really just found myself like it's, it's a topic I've never really decided to go deep into. I've never really seen the issue. And this is something we'll talk about as this video progresses. But I want to highlight a passage in the Bible quickly before I give you my next point, because I think it's really relevant to me not being educated on this particular topic and some of the experiences and engagements I've had in the last year or two. It's in this passage here from 2 Timothy 2.15, which says, Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, but someone who rightly divides the word of truth. I'll be reading books in and around the racism topic as it relates to Christianity and feel free to leave your book recommendations on the topic which you think are a good one for me to actually read. And as I read this book I, it did make me think like why have I been in this bubble for so long? Maybe a day or two ago I was thinking about my upbringing and just different churches I went to. The main church like in my mind that I remember a lot from that we went to when we were young on different occasions was a mixed church. It had a mixed congregation of black people and white people, if we're gonna just describe people in those categories. Growing up, I didn't ever really see like racism and Christianity as a thing. It was just, you know what, we're Christians. I don't see myself as a black Christian. I see myself as a Christian who is of a brown tone. That's how I see myself. I'm a Christian first. And then I started thinking not only about upbringing in church, but I also started thinking about it's like the gospel music I listen to. And I've mentioned this in previous times, but it's like I'm the kind of person who can listen to a wide plethora of gospel music. I could listen to things like Don Moen. I could listen to Darlene. I could listen to um, some old school Juanita Bynum, Fred Hammond, Marvin Sapp. I could listen to hymns. I listen to hymns, um, if that's a surprise to you. I listen to someone like Frank Edwards out of Africa. And for me, it's always been about what we are singing in this worship, not what somebody looks like, not necessarily the instruments they use or the tempo they basically sing to. Worship predominantly is about what people are saying and what we're saying to our creator. And the question I would ha have to ask you in this particular scenario is, if you only listen to one type of gospel music, the question is, why now before we get into some of the negatives i have with this book and some of the good chapters i like in the book and what this book made me have to repent of i want to talk about just some of the recent engagements i've had over the last year with um professing hebrew israelites and one thing i've realized in the last year with those kind of engagements is the whole race issue is a big thing now let's talk about some of the chapters in this book that i like right i like chapter six in this book by pastor jerome gay jr because he talks about the basically like what he's classifying as prejudice. He talks about the different standards, the double standards there actually are between some people who are professing Christians from the past and others. Like I'm reading through chapter six thinking to myself, well, okay, like I get it. From my perspective, like we shouldn't be impartial, right? He talks about that heavily. And this is something in my life I kind of live already. Like, look, if I do something wrong, it doesn't matter what color I am, like I should be corrected and I should hopefully repent and then move on. If someone else who's of a different skin tone to me is doing something wrong, they should be corrected and they should hopefully repent and then move on. Like I've never really seen it like this as, you know what, this is a white man, this is a black man and we're, they're both professing Christians but we're treating them different ways. Now, another good chapter in the book which I liked was the next chapter, chapter seven, which is titled Hidden Heroes. And this was a good chapter because he's basically talking about these um, people of a darker skin tone, right? People from Africa who were Christians and who and who were very influential for different reasons, right? Who but who are 
necessarily painted as white in regards to surveying history. As I started reading through the chapter, I started to think to myself, look, you know what, for people who have these kind of issues, have these kind of struggles, we'll talk about this later on in today's video as well, right, who are very caught up in whitewashing, he basically just surveys, look, these are key individuals, some good, who did a lot of good, some who um, did some good, but ultimately had heretical problems and things along those lines. But he's showcasing these individuals to show people that, look, you know what, these are people from history who look like you, right? If that's what you need. Now, the reason I'm saying it like this is because firstly, um, many of the individuals he mentions, I knew about, I've heard about, etc. Right? Even though I'm not the most steeped in church history, but at the same time, going back to what I talked about with like engaging people like Hebrew Israelites, it was good. And I said this to my wife yesterday. It was good to read the book and hear things from a different perspective. You can read church history and it not be a race like issue. But now I've realized that I can, and I've done this in, in the past previously as well. But now engaging with like a what we classify as like a black cult group right we can engage with them and some of the arguments they make we i can now present it from a like african race perspective but why not because i necessarily care about that because that's what they care about right? growing up obviously not really seeing the whole race issue when i got saved and began reading the bible right you you generally know like most people who have done basic reading, basic understanding of just the scriptures in and of itself, know that Jesus was not a white man, right? Most people will acknowledge this. Christ is my savior. It doesn't matter what his exact skin tone was. We know he's um, of a darker skin tone, right? Whether he's black, whether he's um, somewhere in the middle of the, the, the color spectrum, it never really mattered to me. And another chapter I lacked in this book was chapter 10, which was the response to whitewashing. And this is where he gets into just the whole um, group of like the sub apologetic group of urban apologetics. Now, even before reading this book, I've been um, aware of um, urban apologists, if you want to call it that. I listen to some, I recommend some as well, right? Just for the record. So it was good to kind of hear more about that sort of framework and where what that was really birthed out of in, in more detail. I have wondered at times like, why do you classify yourself as urban apologist? Like what, what is different from just general apologetics? And he talks about that in the book. So that was good to ultimately hear, even though I've heard people articulate this previously before. Now, before I get to what this book made me repent of, I want to talk about some negatives in the book. Now, one of the negatives in the book, right? Just being honest is just the typos. Now, I'm not saying there's a mass amount of typos in this book, but reading through the book, it was at least noticeable. I just put it like that. The book is still easy to read. It's still a free flowing book in many different ways, but it was something, and maybe this is just me nitpicking, right? There were certain typos in the book at certain times, which kind of stood out to me. And generally the kind of person I am, I don't know if you're like this as well, you can let me know in the comment section. But when I read books and I get to like a typo, I generally just think, oh, is it me? And I go back and read it again and try to make sure that it is a typo in the book and it's not just me necessarily reading it wrong. But another thing which was a bit negative in my opinion was there were parts of the book which were repetitive and there were certain things I was trying to glean from the book and at certain times I'm just kind of like okay it feels like you're just repeating this like again and again like I want even more of the juice and certain times in the book were a bit sluggish to read but I obviously powered through. Another thing right and this may be me nitpicking again a little bit but certain scripture references that he mentions in the book this doesn't firstly i want to say this as well because i don't want you to get carried away some of the things he mentions is there's no like he's not mentioning scriptures which changes the overall theme like largely of the intention of the book right for example he talks about he references the early gospel the early pages in matthew with the family tree of jesus and the women involved in the family tree and some of the things he says about the women in the family tree i'm I've, i'm reading and i'm kind of like is this fully accurate is it not accurate this is something i want to look into more but i'm pretty certain this ain't 100 percent accurate two more things which came kind of came up now another thing which was a bit of a negative for me was the calvinism like uh, i'm not even gonna lie now and i get it right he is more as he says in the book more calvinistic leaning 
I'm obviously not. And I get he's speaking from that perspective. It wasn't full on Calvinism. I, I don't want you to think that, but there were certain things in it that were kind of like, okay, mm, the Calvinism is a bit strong here, but he is talking about the Reformation at times and he is talking about those kind of things, so I get it. And the final negative before we get into my final chapter and something that I needed to repent about was towards the end of the book, he starts talking about color and I, and I don't know if we're basically saying the same thing or if we're saying something different and this is really something for us to kind of disagree on but i believe he talks about how we aren't supposed to like all this i don't see color he sees it as wrong if i remember correctly and he's like look you know what we are distinct and i've said this multiple times in the video already and this was just my experience i didn't grow up seeing color in christianity i just saw Christianity first not to the point where I'm like look you know we're all some new golden color for example or something like that no like I obviously have always identified that yes we have different skin tones we have different shades but I've always believed that as Christians our our belief in Jesus supersedes all of those things and that should never be something which like divides us like and he's I guess coming from the standpoint of you know what we are diverse and I believe we are diverse right I talked about like the gospel music previously even if you want to classify like preaching as well, like I listen to and um, have listened to in the past different preaching styles, different teaching styles. I don't just listen to one form of preaching or teaching. That's how I've grown up and how I've been raised to enjoy the word, right, wherever it comes from. Now, what in this book calls me to repent of something? This is what I said at the start of this video. And this is all really contingent, really on a passage like Romans chapter 15, verse 1 to 3 you can see in verse 1 it says we then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves let every one of us please the neighbor for good to edification and he gives an example here of the best example possible christ jesus our lord and he says for even christ pleased not himself but as it is written the reproaches of them that reproach thee fell on me so what i needed to repent of really came through what i've classified as my favorite chapter in this book chapter three and this is where he talks about the issue the problem with whitewashing not to a point where i'm at a situation where i'm like look you know what if i see like a picture of a white jesus i'm gonna rip it up or have a problem like that but it really convicted me and made me realize that there are many christians who are leaving the faith because of the whitewashing of christianity some of the things discussed in today's video are causing people all over the world to leave their churches. But if you see any of these things going on in your church, leave now.